Hi, and welcome to the Data Strategy Gurus podcast. Today, we're at the Click World event in Las Vegas, and we are joined by Ed Ost, who is the Director of Solution Architecture. Ed, uh, welcome. Um, you're working for Talent. There's a big thing going on, Talent, collaborating with uh, ClickView. So my first question is, what will Talent bring as an added value to uh, the ClickView platform? Well, ClickView is a great platform. They've kind of worked from the top down, I'll say, focusing first on visualization, evolving to the cloud with ClickSense, and now with Click Data Integration and Click Replicate, they can provide the full data supply chain from event-driven real-time integration with change data capture, and then all the way to the data warehouse. But there's a lot of additional types of data that can be integrated. So click data integration and click replicate are primarily around relational data. There's lots of semi-structured data. If we think of the integration domain, there's the operational applications as well as the analytical and data warehouse applications. Many of the operational applications are using semi-structured data. Oftentimes the OLTP database in the modern world is no longer SQL. It might be no, not only SQL like MongoDB. Yeah. That data ends up in the data lake. We can help process that not only SQL data, normalize it if needed, and then allow it to be mashed up and enrich the primary event-driven data stream from click data integration into the data warehouse. Yeah, so the combination of the two platforms will allow for more enablement across AI teams, uh, data science teams, and BI teams, because I mostly see that these teams are pretty separated due to politics, due to budgets available as such. So this is where you see that that will bring more value to the data then. Absolutely. All those teams have their own perspective on the analytics, but what they share in common is a need for pervasive connectivity to every type of data. It's not like the data scientist only needs access to semi-structured data or streaming data. They do need access to the reference data, the core high-density, high-value data that's in the data warehouse, and vice versa for the traditional analysts. So all of that needs to be there. And to prevent those silos from forming and continuing to propagate, we need a collaborative data platform, a data platform that allows the data engineers to work with the data analysts as well as the data scientists. Yeah, and it, will that mean as well that, well, data literacy, data democratization, availability of data that will be easier uh, by, by using the two platforms as such? Uh, absolutely. You know, as a talent person, I've been with talent for 12 to 13 years. Yeah. I'm so excited to have the potential to partner and work closely with Click because just think about one of the simple things that we encounter on the talent side all the time. We help our customers build data pipelines, real-time pipelines, batch pipelines, spark big data pipelines. But you need data observability for all of that. You need data quality instrumented right into every pipeline. And if you have that, you need to be able to visualize that. Mm -hmm. We have it, but without click, we have to roll our own visualization. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have the metadata, you have every, the data about the data, about yes. the performance of the data and availability. And then now with click, it will be easier to, uh, to have a view on that and take right. decisions on what is happening on your data platform. Absolutely. And we roll up to data governance. Once you have that pervasive data quality, you can attach that to data governance. So on the one hand, data observability might be about a particular data pipe. Yeah. You want to monitor it. You want to see when there's deviations from normal operations. But then you also want cross-cutting perspectives on that data quality. How do I see my key performance indicators around, especially reference data, customer 360 across multiple bounded contexts if you're in the you know, microservice domain. Well, you can get that by delivering your data quality metrics to a data quality data mark. 
And what are we going to visualize it in? How can we even design a data vault, a data quality data vault? Well, I can use Click for that. Yeah, we were talking a lot about the technology as such as an enabler to, to make life easier for the data platform, all the data engineers, data scientists, uh, AI engineers, uh, all the people working around the technical part of the data. But how do you see that that will tie into the data strategy, the business strategy, where you should start with the question, what are we trying to uh, know about the business and then tie back to finding that data? We need that lineage, that data lineage, so that what transforms the data into information is contextualizing it in a particular business process. So then when I look at my key business processes, I can say, what are the decision support points within the business process? Am I getting and leveraging all the data that I can to make the best decision possible? Am I instrumenting my business process so when things inevitably change, perhaps in an unanticipated way, well, I'm gonna be able to react with agility. So when I do that, I did integration, I instrumented it with data quality, and then I can think about managing my data as a product. If I can manage it as a product, I can inform how the, the data product informs the business process. Yeah, and really, well, I, I like the, the, the idea where you say then we tie into data product and then give the, the business information out right. of the data as, as such. Well, over the, the span of I'm thinking about 12, 13 years back, uh, big data was all the hype and yes. that. I've been playing with the open source version of Talent at the days. How did Talent evolve to solve different type of problems with the data, what you've seen over, over the span of the last 10 years? Well, you know, when big data first came out, it was like a lot of innovation. There's this explosion of innovation around Hadoop. Uh, driven by Apache communities, yeah. we have Spark, and there's a proliferation of many different, I'll say modules of Hadoop. Now we see a reverse trend where we're consolidating on standards. Spark as the core yeah. big data capability. And then around that, we have things like Delta Lake and SQL as the ubiquitous language of data. That's what most data analysts understand. They want to manipulate the data in SQL. It could be Spark SQL. It could be Pushdown SQL on Snowflake. And so in the modern lake house, there is a question. Where's the boundary between you know, the, the data lake and the data warehouse? A lot of times you'll see the data warehouse at the core data, and I'll call it the gold tier to use Databricks. Yeah. <laughs> but most of the raw zone or the bronze tier and the silver zone, a lot of that's being done in the data lake. And for good reasons, cost-effective reasons because just of the cost, and if you're formatting the data and you don't have the rigorous SLAs for responsiveness, then you can afford to do that. Whereas, whereas in the gold tier, it's interactive exploration by a data analyst. You need a tool like Click uh, so that you can explore, understand, and visualize. Yeah, then you, well, if I'm understanding well, you say one of the big principles on data management is do it all in the data lake, and then it's it's available for everybody? Not, not necessarily. Do it all in the appropriate portion, in the lake house. Some of the data may need to go directly into the cloud data warehouse, and especially if you've got change data capture, you know, why not stream it directly? And if you're doing a new project, your number one risk is to prove your business value. So even if it's more expensive getting it into, the, into your cloud data warehouse, do that first, then optimize by moving operations that can afford to be done in the data lake in the data lake. And then mash up that, those other types of data like we said, the semi-structured data. Yeah, yeah. First prove the value and then uh, try to see where you put the burden to create the value as such. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Coming to that, I was thinking, can you give some three or four uh, points where businesses should focus upon first to get to that real uh, value out of their data? I would say set up the concept of data as a product. And you know, I'm just re repeating points from the very uh, widely used metaphor of data mesh. You know, it's really yeah, an yeah. enterprise architecture. But the one that jumps out is data as a product. And if I think of data mesh, I think of it as 
applying traditional service orientation principles, microservices to data in a data-centric collaboration. So everything that's old is new again, but with maybe a twist, right? Nothing goes away. We're back not yeah. where we started, but hopefully a little bit better. Yeah, that's that's what I see as well. Technology changed a bit and, and the cost of deploying that technology and making it available. And that's why we're now discussing data mesh and, and the data product uh, principles. If I think back, we had back in the days the fact tables uh, in dimensional modeling, which kind of the same process where you now have data governance attached to those data products and really tied into uh, a business value, as you say. Yeah. One of the things I see that may be forgotten, but maybe is new again, is you know, back in the day, I'm sure you, you remember, we had <laughs> ODS, right? It's your operational data store. You preserve the original data in its schema. And the difference was back then, the ODS, you know, it was ephemeral. You, you threw away the data. But with the data lake and the you cheap can. storage, you can keep it. Yeah. And you need to keep it because your data scientists want that old data and they want it in the raw format. They don't want it scrubbed. So the data lake can be thought of as, I'll call it a multi-mode, semi-structured and structured uh, ODS. And that introduces great opportunities for real-time ODS. So you've got the, you know, uh, analytical processing back here, but you have some opportunities for real-time ODS as well. And so I think that would be a secondary target. So once you have your data as a product, you have that collaborative, non-invasive governance from the bottom up. This shouldn't be top-down burdensome data governance. It's emergent data yeah, governance. Yeah. And if we got the data product, then the next thing is, can we streamline our data operations? Not a, the data operations that feed the business processes. So we can have the data marketplace. We can evolve things. We have the service contract, so things are lo loosely coupled. So yeah. when we think data as a product, the first thing I think of is, hey, what, what's my schema? And what's my contract? If I'm a consumer, what's going to protect me so that my investment isn't going to be brittle? And the first yeah. time that they make upstream changes, you know, I'm going to be hustling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an important thing what you mentioned as well. The upstream changes, is, is that something where uh, talent is providing a, a lot of tooling, a help? Uh, to make sure that you don't break those streams because that's very often a thing what I see, especially in data science projects or AI uh, projects these days. They build a model on the laptop, they need to deploy it to uh, production, and then, oops. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, there's all levels of maturity for CI, CD, and the software development life cycle, and a lot of it has been focused on managing the binary artifacts themselves, as well as the deployment. But there's this whole other stream of how do we apply uh, similar change management to the data artifacts, things like flyway for the schemas, and, and those are have to come together if we're going to achieve data ops. It's not just DevOps, for data and doing CI, CD, it's change management. And the difference is when we do the change management across organizational boundaries in that data marketplace where the pub data producer and the data consumer are in different organizations, maybe across the enterprise boundary, we need a vehicle for change management. The contract does that. So Talon helps do that by service enabling any data set. With a click of a button, you can create an OData endpoint. That can become your contract. That's great. And it's also something that's standards-based and portable across an enterprise boundary. When you've got schema change, then you can manage it in a service-oriented way. And you know, ideally, in the distant future, you could use other tools to make schema evolution less painful. Yeah, yeah, OK. It's a, it's a very nice uh, wrap-up, uh, Ed. Uh, thanks for that. I have a one last question because I see data connects us all, but there is not a thing in the world like music what connects us all. What is your favorite type of music or band? My type of music? Um, I guess I'm older, so I, I like a lot of 80s alternative music. And you know, if I had a metaphor to bring it back here, I'd say this is a new wave, right? Let's try and surf that new wave and apply it in a loosely coupled but tightly integrated way. Ed, thanks very much. Thank you.